Okay, let's talk about raw video and metadata. Whether you're recording with the RED MX, the Epic, the Scarlett, or you're using the Arri Alexa, the Sony F65, or any similar type of camera, what you're recording is raw data. Now, every video camera has a sensor that converts the light of the image into a digital signal. The path of that digital signal is split. The unaltered raw image that comes from the camera sensor is recorded onto the media storage, whether it be compact flash, hard drive, SD card, or whatever. Certain things are part of what is baked into the image. The frame rate, for example. The raw images are also sent to the internal processor for the monitors and viewfinder. This is what you affect when you change such things as the ISO selection on the camera, the color balance, be it daylight, tungsten, fluorescent, or whatever custom color balance you choose. Also, color alterations in the matrix, the gamma curve, color space, and so on. These are all recorded as metadata. What happens in the internal processor only affects the viewing stream, what you see on the monitors and in the viewfinder. These choices that you make about the look of your image do not affect what is being recorded on the storage medium. This is the key point you must understand about shooting RAW. Okay, now let's take a look at this shot. As a test, we deliberately set the camera to the wrong color balance, 3200 degrees Kelvin. The shot is outdoors in open shade, so it's clearly way too blue. Down here on the vector scope, we can see how far it has shifted down to the blue range. Now let's take a look at the actual metadata for these shots. We can see it here in the media browser. Here are the shot identifiers. The time code, the color space, which was red color, the gamma curve, which is red gamma in this case, and of course the color balance in degrees Kelvin. The color balance in these tests covered a pretty wide range from 1800 up to 9400 degrees Kelvin which is the highest the camera will go. 5600 was our normal daylight. Shots at 3200 are normal indoor shots, and some shots were at 4200 degrees Kelvin. I'm guessing these were fluorescent shots because that's a typical average for fluorescent lighting. And you can see that, yes, this was one of our fluorescent tests. The tint metadata is the magenta green balance. So to correct for fluorescent, we adjust the tint metadata. This column is ISO. Now this is a tricky one. When you meter a shot and you set the ISO on the camera, you think, well, that's a permanent part of the shot. That's the way it's recorded. Not really. Not on a camera that shoots raw. ISO is metadata just like all the others. The RED camera happens to be native ISO 800. But we change the way it appears on the monitor and in the viewfinder by changing the ISO setting on the camera. For these tests, we set ISO as high as 3200 and as low as 100. That was for the daylight shots to compensate for the fact that we had way too much light outdoors. Most of these shots we did at the camera native 800 ISO. So let's go to our shot. Here we can see it's way too blue and it also looks a little too dark for me. So let's go to the matrix. Now there are all kinds of controls in the matrix. Levels, pre-gain, color wheels, curves, numeric, and so on. There are many different ways to change the look of your scene. We can certainly mess around with it and try to make it look a little bit more normal in, in terms of color balance. And actually, you know, we're, we're getting pretty close here. We can tweak it and play around with it a little more. And you can see that, it, yes, it is possible to adjust the shots and get them back to a normal color balance. But clearly, this is a very time-consuming way to do it, and it's also a little bit guesswork. So we're going to reset the metadata back to where we started. Let's do this in a more controlled way with the FX controls down here in the corner. This is particular to Assimilate Scratch, which is what we're using here. Other applications may or may not have these kinds of controls, and they may call them something different. Let's click on this, and what we see here is the metadata. Here's the degrees Kelvin, the color balance. We shot it at 3200, so we know that's wrong. We also have tint, color space, the gamma curve, and the FLUT, or FLUT. We'll come back to that in a moment. So let's take a look at the color balance, which is the one we know is wrong. 
Let's try 5600 degrees Kelvin, which is more of a normal daylight balance. So right away, without using any other controls, we're back to a much more normal color balance. What we change is the metadata of the color balance. Okay, now that's fairly neutral on the gray cards, fairly neutral in the skin tone, but it still looks a little underexposed. Now we know that the exposure for this shot was theoretically correct according to the measurements on the set. We checked it very carefully with a light meter. Let's try and take a look at ISO 1000. That's a little more normal. ISO 1280, that's actually pretty good. The issue here is that light meter readings with a RED camera do not necessarily correlate accurately with your ISO settings in all situations. To compensate for this, Graham Natris devised the F-LUT or FLUT. It's a way of adjusting the midtones without causing clipping. The FLUT is calibrated in F-stops. Here we look underexposed, so I'm going to set the F-LUT at about 0.5. That gives us a much more accurate exposure rendition. So let's accept that and go back to our color controls. The shot is okay. It's kind of blah. You can see that none of our shadows really get down to pure black, and none of our highlights get all the way up to pure white. Now let's do something that's almost standard on these kinds of shots. It's called crush the shadows and stretch the highlights, or crush the blacks and stretch the whites. In other words, give the shot a little more contrast and make sure the range is from pure black to pure white. Let's use these color wheels to take the shadows down a little deeper here. Now we use gain to take our highlights up. We don't want to take them to a place where the skin tone is starting to clip. We can also adjust the gamma. Now that's actually, that's better. This is just a demo test shot, so we want to keep things fairly neutral. Now we've got a shot that's fairly neutral, and it's closer to the way we wanted it to look. Now we can render the shot out in whatever format we choose, be it DPX files, QuickTime movies, AVI files, whatever we want. At this point, when we render out, that's when the look gets baked in to the files. So that's a quick look at how metadata works when shooting RAW.